Let's get started. Yes, Stand to your feet then. Yes, In Joshua chapter 24. The Bible says that Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem. And he summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. The Bible says that Joshua is a very good person. Then comes a verse I liked very much. And they presented themselves before God. Whoa, that's a nice verse. So Joshua called the whole nation together. There were the leaders, but there were the, the whole people as well. And they presented themselves before God. Even Joshua presented himself. You know, when we stand before God, there is no difference. We forget our roles. We are all children of God. We are all, all his church, his body on earth. Joshua had his role. Joshua had their role. The heads had their roles. The heads, I don't know what that means. <laughs> There were some heads. The heads, the judges had their roles. So the people of law were represented. The officers were there as well. I believe the officers were the administrators. So all people were there. And they all presented themselves before them. Then God spoke to them. And he instructed them. Because this was a very important moment. Joshua, Joshua was a man. He had almost finished his mission. Actually, at the end of the chapter, he dies. And a new chapter opens up for the nation. That's why God brought them all together to talk to them. To prepare them for what was about to come. To put certain words in their hearts. Put a seed in their hearts. Raise a morning star in their hearts. Which will help them to enter a new season. At least it was God's intention. Unfortunately, it didn't work. If you just turn the page, you find out it did work. And they had to wait until the days of Samuel before it began to work. My personal belief, my personal conviction is this that these three, four years, our transitional years, in, into a new decade. 18, 19, 20, maybe 21. So whatever God says in these years, we have to pay attention. Don't be tempted to think this is not relevant. Because it might not be relevant today. Maybe in three years' time, it will be relevant. That's why don't, don't sort out what you feel is relevant and what is not relevant, what is for me, what is for her, what is for him. 
Тэгэхээр танд хэлэгдэж байгаа бүхний үгэл өөрийнхөө оюун болоод битгий шүү. Энэ надад хамаатай, энэ тэрэнд хамаатай, энэ одоо хамаагүй гэж битгий шүү. Open your heart. Зүр сэтгэлээ нэ. We see everything. Бүгдийг хүлээж байгаа. жилийн дараа магадгүй бид нар өөр түүний хилжсэн үгэн яг энийг хэлээд ирсэн байна. That's what process that he said that that Sunday morning in November. Тэр мөчрөөс пастор баг хэлсэн 11 сар That's why we have to pay attention every Sunday, every time we are together. За тийм учраас бид бүтэн сайн болгоод цуглах болгондоо анхааралтай байгаас. Every time we present ourselves before God. Бид бурхны бурханд өөрийгөө өгөх болгондоо бурхны өмнө очих болгондоо анхааралтай байгаа. So Father, we present ourselves for you before you tonight. Аа өнөөрө бид таны өмнө ирж байна. We know in our heart and our spirit these are important years. Бид өөрсдийнхөө сүнс болоод зүрх сэтгэлдээ энэ жилүүдийн маш чухал ач холбогдлыг мэдэрч байна. And we want to be conscious of that. Бид нар үнэхээр өөд ухамсартай хандмаарай. We don't want to be tense about it. Бид нар би сандарч чирчирмээр байна. We don't want to worry about it. Санаа зовморгүй байна. We don't want to panic about it. Бид нар ингээд гайхшир маадгүй байна. We will trust you. Харин танд найдах болно. Because you are good God. Учир та бол сайн бүх юм. Jesus you are the head of the church. Jesus та бол сүмийн тэргүүн. You know where to take your body. Та өөрийнхөө биеийг хаашаа авч явах юм бэ? You know how to heal the body. Та өөрийнхөө биеийг хэрхэн байх юм бэ? You know how to heal the body. Өөрийн биеийг хэрхэн идгээх юм бэ? You know how to inspire the body. Та өөрийн биеийг хэрхэн сэрээх юм бэ? You know how to remove things from our body which is not good for us to carry. Бидний биед байх ёсгүй зүйлсийг хэрхэн зайлуулахаа та мэд. So these years in these days father help us to pay attention. Тэгэхээр энэ өдрүүдэд болоод эдгээр жилүүдэд та биднэ анхааралтай байхад туслаа. To have the ear and the attitude of the disciple. Та бид student. Та бид дагалдагчийн сургачийн чихийг хандлагыг өгөөч юм. So help us in these days. Тайны өдрүүдэд бидэнд туслаа. Амин. 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 Юу биш үү? So in these days we will become our friendship with Peter will be refreshed. За энэ энэ өдрүүдэд бидний Петер дээр харилц харилцаа өгөхөөр сэрэх болно. Has become has to become a new friend for us. Бидний шин найз болох болно. We forget the day where he went down in the water. Түүний уусан дээр алхаж байгаа жив шахсан өдрүүдийг мартъе. Forget the day where he denied Jesus. Есүсийг өгүүлсэн өдрүүдийг мартъе. We forget the day where he cut the ear of a soldier. Тэргийн чихийг тасалсан өдрүүдийг мартъе. That was Peter. Петр ахгүй ихэрчээ. But Peter did extremely well. Гэхдээ тэр үнэхээр гайхалтай зүйлсийг хийсэн юм аа. That's why his letters are very important. Тэр учраас түүний захидлууд маш чухал. Small letters. Жижигхэн захидлууд. With a big message. Гэхдээ маш агуу одоо message гэдэг. Message which has weight. Жинтэй баастай. Good weight, not heavy weight. Not to push us down. Heavy weight, but 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 not to Оюун санаага үйлдэлт хэлдэг. Be sober minded. Ирүүл ухаантай бай. And set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Есүс Христийн дахин амьдралд руу таамлаг авиачих бурхны нэгүүсэл бүх найдвараа тавиарсан байна. I will come back to that. За энэ талаар дараа яг. But first let me just go through what we went through yesterday. Өчигдөр яриа зогссон зүйл. Just to bring it up. What we settled together yesterday. So we are on the same page. We have to walk together. We cannot go back to the starting line and run again. Back to the starting line and run again. All right. So number one was dispersion is part of life. За нэгдүгээр нь тархах асуудал гэдэг бол амьдралын нэг хэсэг юм. It's normal. Энэ бол энгийн хэрэг. Sometimes our minds are a bit confused. Заримдаа бидний оюун санаа одоо ингэж үеймдэг байгаа. Then we need clarity. Тэр үед бид нар тодорхой байдал хэрэгтэй. But it's okay. Тэгээ зүгээр. It's not a sin. Тийм нүгэл биш. To be confused. 
makes us vulnerable because when you're confused you don't know what to do because you are confused <laughs> So it's not a nice place to be. So don't be confused for years. But if your mind is a little bit here and there, a couple of weeks, that's okay. Talk with him. He's like shine. Clarity. So Peter is not scolding them. He's not angry at him, he's not frustrated at him. He accepts the fact that they are spread all, all over the region. But at the same time, he knows that that's a vulnerable place to be. Just like me, when I'm confused, I'm vulnerable, I have to be careful. Peter knew that. Peter That's why God put on his heart and his brain to write two letters to them. Because dispersion could become diversion. Diversion can lead to disconnection. And this connection will always lead to decline. Okay? So, this person is part of life. Let's speak about church. Every church knows has a certain measure of this person. Some are up, some are down. Some are on small ex excursion somewhere. But then they come back to the main road. We cannot avoid that. That's normal church life. I can have good weeks, I can have difficult weeks. Sometimes Sunday morning, the last thing I want to do is to speak. That's why some pastors they say, today we have only worship. <laughs> or we will have testimony time. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we can have bad days, you can have bad days, I can have bad days. Jonathan David is very honest with that as well. He said to us sometimes, if you look at my face, I don't look good, leave me alone. <laughs> that's not the same, that's normal. We're not we are not cherubs and seraphims. We are human beings. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. I hope I look good tonight. Okay, so this person is part of life. But we must be conscious that that's a vulnerable place to be. We have to watch ourselves so we don't let the enemy take advantage of it. That's why Paul wrote to the Ephesians and said, do not make room for the enemy. So you can be dispersed or confused, but don't let the enemy have an access to your life. Number two, what I said yesterday is, Peter is the right person to instruct us. Because he was all over the place. On the top of the mountain, under water, he was a submarine. <laughs> he was a mountain climber and a submarine. He met Elijah. And uh, I mean, you know, 
his story. So I think God picked up the right person to talk about that. Because he's an example that we can go through that and do well. Even after Pentecost, and the church was made of thousands of members, God was still struggling with Peter. He was stubborn, he was stiff. And uh, so Peter is the right person. That's why we have to know these two letters. And my prayer is that after this week or these days, these two letters will mean a lot for, for you. In these important years. Number three, God wants progress. No decline, no but standing firm. That's what Peter wrote to them. Wherever you are, the work of God must not decline. Because if it declines, the whole region will suffer. Because we are light carriers. Amen. Amen. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its power, it's good for nothing. That's what he wrote to them. God wants progress. Keep walking, keep standing. Even now, from time to time, still sending the link to that song. Keep walking, soldier. When, when I pray for them, I can feel my mind, oh. We are dispersed in Europe. I better send the song again. Move, keep walking, soldier. Because we are dispersed. So, we have to know God really wants progress. God wants you to progress. Amen. Amen. At your workplace, in your, your, your studies, wherever your work is, in your family, in, in your neighborhood, God wants you to progress. He wants your life to influence others. We had a visit of the pop of a pastor recently. It's a new friend. We didn't have friends for 22 years. Now we have one. A pastor friend. So miracles are possible in Denmark. And uh, he preached in our, in our church. And he spoke about some of his members who are so alive, working so well with God. That almost wherever they go, people they meet ask them, Who are you? Because they sense something. And we all laughed and we think, Whoa, good points. Two weeks later, we had some young people from Holland and England in our church. And we went to the restaurant Sunday, Sunday lunch after the meeting. And then I went to pay the bill. And the lady looked at me. The pay the bill. I went to the pay the bill. And then she looked at me, who are you? Who are these young people? I like to hear things like that. People will, will know. There is, if you walk with him, fragrance, they will smell something. They don't know what it is, but they will know one day. So no ignite, stand firm. Even if you are dispersed, stand firm. I went to Holland to Pastor Johnny's church. I think there are 11 or 12 members. Small church. The world and atmosphere. 
Heaven is open. People are in the spirit. That's wonderful. God wants the kingdom to advance. That's why we must not decline. Because we are the agents of the kingdom. We are the ambassadors. If we decline, the kingdom will not progress, will not advance, it will regress. Am I right? I am right. Because Peter wrote to these people in that region. And today, in 2019, not one of these churches exists. Now it's Turkey, a Muslim country, with a Muslim president. Are we so when we decline, the kingdom just goes back. That's why whatever our dispersion we must value our house, the church. We must value one another. Even if there is a geographical distance, we must stay in touch. Because the kingdom has to advance. Amen. Amen. The, the, thing, the next thing I said yesterday was midnight is the door to a new day. You, you remember that? We have to go through some midnights. We will. But if we can go through them, the new day will open up for us. Yesterday night I found by coincidence a verse in the book of Psalms. I think it's I hope I can find it again. No. Oh, that's why I can't find it. Thank you, Mark. I think it's 35. No, it's 35. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not 35. Chapter 30, verse 5. The second part of the verse. Weeping will may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Oh. What a good verse. Amen. Weeping, we may weep during the night. Time to time there are tears, we cry, we weep. Because the, the, the midnight, the night, the darkness is challenging us and stretching us. But if we keep walking, we keep connecting, I said to some of my mentees, I said to them, walk and talk. I had a post on Facebook recently. Um, distance does not separate people. Silence does. Whoa, that was so helpful. Silence separates. That's, that's one issue I had to cope with in our couple life, in our marriage. Because every time I was not doing well, I kept silence. And my wife was exploding silently. <laughs> He said to me, why don't you talk? Talk to me! Don't you say something? I had to think, I had to figure out. I was silent for days. And God said to me, you must change. Because silence separates people. I can be here 
Mongolia, she's at home. Distance does not separate us. But if we don't communicate, that can create something between us. So, good morning, honey. How are you? Just have a breakfast. You don't need to preach for one hour. Walk, keep walking, and keep talking. I mean, that kind of preach to my wife. She would just... So we have to walk and talk. So at midnight, you can talk with people. You must know certain people you can talk with. At the midnight hour. Are you with me? So midnight is the door to a new day. Christians who avoid midnight will not taste the next season in their life. Put in another way, death is the way to resurrection. If you die with me, you will resurrect with me, Jesus said. Jesus is Actually, I remember the seminar where Momo was introducing the meeting. Yeah. It's in August. In, huh? It's in August. Yeah. No, once, so, two years ago. ago. And in that seminar, I spoke a lot about dying. And when he had the meeting, he was so happy. And he laughed and laughed. <laughs> and he said, I'm so happy I'm dying. <laughs> that's the right thing to do. Keep, keep rejoicing, because that's the way to resurrection. We put off the old man and we put on the new man. We put off ego and we put on Christ. The less ego, the less it is. The more Christ, the better it is. Amen. So midnight is okay. The wilderness is okay. Strange time. Amen. Okay, then I spoke about this. I spoke about, about the 7,000 who had not bowed their knees for Baal. They were hidden somewhere. Nobody knew they were there. But they were there. They walk with God in all anonymity. And Elijah had to know. So God told him, don't cry, Elijah. Don't commit suicide, Elijah. The doors of heaven are closed. <laughs> you will not come in. Go back to the earth. Yeah, but Jezebel, forget Jezebel. I have 7,000 heroes ready to stand up and walk with you. Then I have Jehu. Then there was another king. You know what Jehu? What Jehu did? He fixed Jezebel. What was impossible for Elijah, Jehu did in 30 seconds. It was standing at the bottom of the wall. Jezebel was up there mocking him. And there was a servant next to her. And Jehu said to the servant, Throw her down. And he pushed her down. <laughs> and the dogs came in and ate her. What a wonderful story. <laughs> yeah. It takes a few seconds for Jehu. But Elijah had to finish his mandate. And the next generation was able to take what the former generation was not able to take. 
That's why we have to think next generation. Not only young people. The 7,000, they were the next generation. There were 7 young people. The 232. And they were kings. And they were prophets. And God called on Elijah. Called him to stand up. Stand firm. Take responsibility. God said, the king asked God, who shall go? He said, you are going. I wrote a small article recently and I called it the blind, the lame and the irresponsible. Because in the temple in Jerusalem, you remember the story when Jesus walked through the street of Jerusalem and they were you know, waving with the palms and waving the coats on the road and the donkey? Big celebration. But he went to the house. Because something was wrong with them. The house was dispersed. The dispersion can lead to decline. So he had to fix certain issues in the house. Which he did. Then the Bible says that the blind and the lame came to him. And he healed them all. And the Pharisees who were there we're not happy with that. But there was one more group of people in the temple. It was children. The children were worshipping God. So we are Jesus. We are the blind and the lame. We are the Pharisees. And we have the next generation. He healed the blind and the lame. He healed the blind, he healed the lame. He supported the next generation. The Pharisees were hopeless. That's why in that article I wrote, God can heal the blind, God can heal the lame, but God cannot heal the irresponsible. Because that's his responsibility. Heal yourself. <laughs> Go home and change. Hey, that's life. We have to stand up and take responsibility. You are responsible for your own work. We can contribute, the pastors can contribute, can invest in you, but you have to work. So children, we support them, we hold their fingers, and we walk with them. But that we hold the bicycle when they learn to ride the bicycle. But we don't carry them in our arms when they are 25 years old. Do you? You walk yourself. Daddy, carry me. No. You do the work. So Jesus can heal the blind, yes. He can heal the lame, yes. The, irres the irresponsible, you fix that problem. I am the right person to instruct you <laughs> because I woke up for two responsibility when I turned 40 years old. I was married, I had four children and I had a church and still running away from responsibility. But God was merciful. I had to take some strong decisions. I had to be, become very determined. But after six months, my wife could not recognize me. So it does not take you know, three lives to change. It takes some determination. 
That's why we will speak about that tonight. Therefore, Peter the domination. Therefore, Peter said, be prepared for action. All over Turkey, the whole region, I know you are dispersed. I know you are there because you ran away from persecution to survive. I know you are sad from time to time. I know you have some dark midnights from time to time. But you have to be determined. Because if your life declines, kingdom regress. That's responsibility. Amen. So you are the hope of Mongolia. You are the hope of your workplace. You are the light in your neighborhood. In the block where you live. There are people there who are ready. If they're not ready, they will become ready. Don't decline, stand firm. So tonight, no, let me just finish this. There is an example of decline in the Bible, in the New Testament. The church of Ephesus is an example of decline. Uh-huh. You can put in your notes. I will just tell you that. Um, in Acts 19, put it in your notes. That's where Paul comes to Ephesus. And he meets 12 people, approximately 12 people. They were disciples of John the Baptist. And he prayed for them. They got baptized with the Holy Spirit. They got baptized in water. And, um, and something happened. Then he trained them. Day after day after day in the school of Tyrannus. Yeah. Train them on a daily basis like we do here. Like you do when you have weekends or intensive training. And the church grew. The whole city was affected. Actually, all minor Asia heard the word. Minor Asia is the region Peter wrote till years later. But in the days of Paul, they had already heard. Their influence was so strong that it produced riots in the city. So strong. Heaven opened so wide that hell just rose to resist it. Out of that, a strong church was born. So when you read the letter Paul sent to Ephesus, so much revelation, so much understanding, so much wisdom, and Paul pray for them, pray for them, so it, it will not decline, it will not decline, okay, so he pray for them that the spirit of understanding will increase among them. Chapter 4, Paul said, Walk worthy the calling you have received. Fight the good fight. Strong church. So much understanding, so much insight. But, in the course of time, decline. So later, Paul later Paul wrote to Timothy. And he said to him, You better go to Ephesus to put some order in that house. 
can find the verse yourself. So Timothy had to go there. To the mess, disorder, dispersion, decline. Long story short. Even later, God said to John, John, write a letter to Ephesus. Listen to what John wrote. Revelation chapter 2. And to the end, oh, yeah, verse 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write. I know your work, your toil, your patient endurance, how you cannot bear with those who are evil, and so on. So there were good things there. Verse 4. But I have this against you. That you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember therefore from where you have fallen. So that's decline. You have fallen. Remember where you have fallen from. Repent. And do the works you did at first. Then John wrote, If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But then at the end of the letter, he said, To the one who conquers, I will plant to eat of the tree of life. Okay. Okay, that's an example. A church which was born out of a miracle. They had a training school going on a daily basis. Spread the city. They challenged the strongholds of the enemy in the city. And they, were, they were burning occult things, items. Then the word spread to the whole region. They were in such a powerful place. But they did not. That's what Peter wrote. So we have to take this very seriously. Don't decline. So be prepared for action. In action, the first action we can take is determination. Okay? Be determined. And I showed you yesterday that in this verse there are three verbs. Let me find them again. That is Peter. He said, prepare your mind. Be sober minded. Set your hope. All three appeals to their will and their determination. Okay, can you hear that? Prepare your mind. It's like orders. Prepare your mind. Be sober. Set your hope fully on the grace. So Peter is appealing. To their ability to take some important decisions. I believe that's the years we are in now. All of us, I think, all of us must take strong decisions. Be determined. But, that is the but here. Because determination, there is determination and determination. One of them can be 
people who have a strong will. Yeah, determined. Uh, I was not until I became 40. I was determined to marry my wife. That was a good one. That was the one of the days. I was not hopeless, you understand what I'm saying? But I really, really, really had to change. Happy I had one of my elders who really pushed me forward. He said to me, let's go together, I said to him. No. That was good for me. I needed to hear that. I had to decide. I had to find out. What is it? What is it I pursue with my life? What is it I want with the church? Is it numbers? Is it money? Is it, is it success? Is it something that I'm proud about? I have to find out. So I was not a determined person. I wish I was, but I was not. But it's not about being a person with a strong will. Because Peter was a man of a strong will. He had a strong will. That's why he said, Jesus, if everybody leaves you, there is only one left. That's me. Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> so he had a strong will. When God said, kill and eat. Nope. I will not do that. Three times. Then God said to him, what I call holy, is holy, period. What I determine, what I settle, is settled. So Peter had a strong will. His emotional life was not that healthy. But his will life. So this determination here it's not about having a strong will. I didn't have. God help me. God built something into it. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that type of determination. Oh, Pastor Philip, you can count on me. Okay. Pastor Philip, not a net Have a drink. Drink for later. <laughs> It's not that. Because people like that, people like that can become a pain in the neck. <laughs> but you think, stop, please. Because they have a strong will, but they don't know what they want. They have a strong will for everything. When they are passionate about evangelism, then they are passionate about worship, then they are prayer warriors. And we think, why don't you relax, you know, have a cappuccino and... So they are, they are two extremes. People with a strong will, not knowing where they are going. And people like I was. People like I was. People like I was. Difficult to take decisions. Postponing decisions. We see later how Certain things don't turn out. You make them turn out. Otherwise, the enemy will take over and turn. You with me? 
So, but there is still a need for determination. Now, I will show you what that determination is built upon. If you want this determination, you have to stand on something. You must have seen something. You must have heard something. There must be one morning star or, or 15 morning stars shining in your heart. Because then you have something to be determined for. Yeah, ヒットンギーバクテリアとシティンギーバクテリアとシティンギーバクテリアとシティンギーバクテリアとシティンギーバクテリアとシティンギーバクテリアとシティンギーバクテリアとシティンギーバクテリアとシティンギーバクテリア
God transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. Remember that verse in Colossians? Yeah. He has transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. So, when we were born again, we left the kingdom and we stepped into a new kingdom. And when we enter that kingdom, as a new creation, whoa, a living hope, a new world, a righteousness, a peace, joy, of mercy, of justice, of future. Amen. Amen. In the future, we have a hope, a new world is opening up for us. The world designed, designed, constructed by God. With, with values, with integrity, with truth. A living hope. We stepped into a living hope. It does not mean we have faith for revival. We don't think that far yet. But hope comes to us. For a better life. Because God wants progress. I mean, if you meet God and you regret something is wrong, you have not met the right person. Everything God has prepared for us will take us higher and make us better. Amen. No, every blessing should take us higher, lift us up. That's why when we enter the kingdom, the first thing hitting us is hope. There is hope in me. I have a life. I didn't have a life. Maybe I had money, but I didn't have meaning with life. Now that there is a meaning, there is a perspective. God has a plan for my life. God has a plan for my life. If you have that under your feet, that creates determination. Then you know, I will pursue that. God does not have to pull you by the hair. Okay, okay, okay. I will follow you, Jesus. No, when we see that hope, that future, whoa, we want it. Determination rises in the courage. There is a future. There is a future for my children. There is a future for my grandchildren. There is even a future for my workplace. I can begin to shine here and there. I can begin to be salt here and there. People can begin to taste my life. And find out there is something special about me. I came to give life and life abundantly. When we were born again, we got access to a living hope. Amen. Amen. Yes. When you see that, you don't have to, you don't need a strong will. Determination is there. You will know, I want that. Nobody will be deviated. I will run after it. I will pursue it. I will, I will, I will, I will just go for it. I know it takes more than that. 
мэдээж ингэж хилгээс илүү зүйн шаардлага шаардлагын I've heard people say that. Ингэж хилж исэн хүмүүсийг би сонсож шүү. Sunday morning. Бүтэн сайн өглөө. Sunday night it has already disappeared. Тэгэж хилжээд бүтэн сайн өөрөө алгалцсан гэж тэр юм. It's not everything there is more to it. Мэдээж үүнээс илүү зүйн. That's number one. A sense of hope. Хамгийн ихний зүйл бол найдварын тэр мэдрэмж. Even I'm sure to myself I'm 70 years old. Even if I don't see revival in Denmark. Би одоо 70 настай тэгээ би дайнд сэргэлтийг хараа. I can still have a living hope for the nation of Denmark. Зүрх сэтгэл дотор дайн улсын төлөө амьд найдвар байгаа. Because our sons and daughters. Я тэгээ би хүүхэд тогтоодыг үсгэх болов. When they have revival I have heaven. Much better. Тэг нэгэн мөнхий устаа очсон байх тэд тэр сэргэлт хийх нь илүү дээр штэ. So I can still have a hope. Тэр надад найдвар байна. I might not see it in my physical lifetime. Би өөрийнхөө энэ газар дэлхийн дээр амьдрал дээр харж чадахгүй байсан. That's the way we should be living hope. Би дээр яг ингэж амьдрах хэрэгтэй амьд найдвар. When our children go to school, they must have that hope. I will do well. I will learn something. Хүүхдүүд маш сургуулийн явахта бас ийм найдварыг тэгсдэг. Би сурч чадна би хэлсэн. We have hope for our children. Би дээр хүүхдүүд тэ найдвар нь. So parents they have saved for their whole life. Зарим эцэг ихчүүд бүхэл амьдралынхаа төлөө provide education for the children. Хүүхдүүдээ сургууль сурах гэдэг юм. Some of them didn't take an education to make sure the children got an education. Зарим хүмүүс бүр хүүхдүүдтэй боловсрал олохын тулд өөрсдөө боловсрал сургууль сурахаасаа татгалзаар хүмүүс цогцлоо. If they had no hope they would use all their money. Яа тийм ээ их ч юм бэ. Тэр хүүхдүүдийнхээ төлөө найдвар байгаа. Тэлсэн байгаа. So hope is important. There is hope for your nation. There is hope for Mongolia. There is hope for Mongolia. So what? Carry that hope. And ready that hope. There is somebody around you who are not 82. They're just 18. Тэгэхээр бол 18 та хин нэгэн тэр найдварыг барьж байгаа шүү дээ. Тийм учраас найдвараа бүрэлдэхүүн тэр найдвар дотор амьдрах. That's number one. Peter said. За Петр энэ хэрэгтэй тэгэж хэлсэн. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Тэр биднийг амьд найдварлууд дахин төрүүлэхээр болсон. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Үхлээс дахин амьсэн Есүс Христийн дахин амьд. Just because of that single fact. Тэр нэг үйл явдлын улмаас we have all reasons to hope. Бид бүгдээрээ найдвартай байх бүгдээрээ найдах шалтгаантай болж байгаа. Amen. Amen. I know you have heard the pastor speak about how he rose from the dead. Тэр пастор ч дахин амьдлын талаар ярьсан гэхийг би мэдэж байна. That's the first time I heard it. Би анх удаа үнийг сонсоод that would have walked on the walls. Би бүр хамт дээр алхмаар санагдчих гэсэн. All the way around. Did that really happen to you? Whoa, what a resurrection. All hell tried to keep him down, but he just broke all that. That's what Peter said. Just because of that, we have all the reasons to carry hope. Because what he did, nobody can undo again. Jesus did his and so did he. It has happened. He took the keys of death and the kingdom of death away from the hands of the devil. He can only succeed. He cannot fail. He cannot fail. He's totally out of the picture. Because of that single fact, he rose from the dead. The father just took him and boom. Nothing can stop him. That's graceful. Number two. Number two. Peter said. Peter said. Verse four. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefined, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Mukushwe, Botsastawe, Ata Botschakwe, Tamri Tito Tinkers, Hatapatsum, Uru, Tekin Kurse. Okay? So God has given us an access to an imperishable, undefined, and unfading inheritance. 
Мөхөш би бодстайгүй алга олдоггүй тэнгэрт хадгалагдсан тэр өөрөө бидний дуудсан байгаа. Then we have to be careful. За энэ дээр бид болгоомжтой. Because the usual Christian thinking is одоо христчин тогтсон шүтгэлийн болгоомжтой байх that's the lie. It's not true. He stood up in heaven for us. So we can draw on it as we live here on earth. Sorry for the comparison, but it's like a bank account. Би одоо банкны данстай харьцуулийн ийм харьцуулт хийж байгаа дуучлаарай. It is there. Тэнд байгаа. But you have to get there and withdraw money. Таны мөнгө банкт хадгалагдсан байгаа. Харин түүнийг авахын тулд та банк руу очоод данстаас гаргаж авдаг тийм үү? So Peter said. Бид Петр хийж чинь. You have a hope. Та нар найдвар байгаа. Even you disperse Jesus goes from the dead. Your dispersion, your isolation, your feelings of being lonely cannot undo his resurrection. So keep that hope alive. Okay. Number two, he says, in heaven, everything you need is stored up for you. Not waiting for you until you get to heaven. But waiting for you so you draw it so heaven can come down on earth. That's why even, that's why even you are dispersed. And you feel isolated. The church is small. Or the youth group is a small youth group. Not all youth group. A small youth group. But Peter said, whatever the size, you can draw on the inheritance which is stored up for you. Even I'm isolated, even I go through midnight hour, even I feel lonely and left by everybody, nobody thinks about me, nobody mails me, nobody, nobody calls me. What kind of church is that? The pastor is asking about me. You know what? You have access to inheritance in heaven which is prepared for you. You will be tempted to So listen to this. Watch this. I can be in Denmark feeling alone. But he gave me access to my inheritance. So even nobody cares about me, nobody prays for me. He gave me access to my inheritance. And that's my responsibility. What about their responsibility? Their responsibility is their responsibility. They have to draw on their inheritance. Are you with me? This is our foundation. The more we see that, the more we become conscious of that, that Tuesday at school or at work, or Friday afternoon the boss is angry with you because you messed up something in the company, you can still be happy, determined. You did a mistake, you must correct it. Take responsibility. Whatever he pays you, you have to do what you have to do. Amen. 
That's the foundation. It is good. The more we become conscious of that, the more we remind ourselves. Peter, w h n you go home, start to s m o k to any sign or t o s m This is what Peter is doing. He reminds them. Hey. Peter, it. Yes, I know you are this person. I'm this person too, by the way. I'm absolutely confused in this, in this month of May. But let me tell you something. No, Korea has landed. Hello, Amy. Oh, welcome. Yeah, you know she is this person, but she's here. <laughs> <laughs> she is connected. <laughs> We work together. We work together from time to time. <laughs> so Peter said to them, remember. You have a hope. Because he rose from the dead. <laughs> Nobody can stop this. <laughs> even if you die, even if somebody kills you, the hope is still there. <laughs> you have an inheritance. The more we remind ourselves and one another about that, the more determined we become. So don't tell me, oh, I have this weak will, I'm such a weak person. I'm born with a weak personality. I am. An emo- emotional tsunami. We a e t t l e tsunami t o s t a y Look at, look at, look at your foundation. You have a living hope. Yes. You have an inheritance. Yes. But I think it's gone. No, it's not gone. It's o n l h e o l e a n d i f i e u n f a d i n g Your sadness, your emotionalism does not. Contaminate heaven. Tani yamas chik hoy kashu tani yamas chik sitil hutlil tir uvit uvit osta chata. I know some people say, oh, I'm not coming to church, pastor, because I don't want my depression to contaminate everybody. The there who must think this the pia sunde eri mo ekhe mini ota in tarat te bethno sumi who must think inge dokto te sengi chus ko tipus inge tarcha sengi chus. Do you think we are that weak? You just show up. Our joy will contaminate you. You think your emotions can defy the inheritance? Forget it. Undefined. Even if you do big mistakes, your mistake will not affect the inheritance. So look at your foundation. Peter said, I remind you. I already wrote you one letter. This is my second letter. Look at your foundation. Then determination will come. Yeah. 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 Can we continue? Yes. You will have to break. Access to an unbeatable joy. So, so, verse 6. In this you rejoice, mm-hmm. though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Yeah, verse 6. So Peter said to them, Listen to me. I want to remind you that God gave you full access to an unbeatable joy, irresistible joy. It's so strong, it's so massive, it's so intense that even in times of trials, you can still rejoice. We disperse and rejoice. <laughs> Keep rejoicing. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. As, as I look at this, my goodness, I don't lack determination. When I look at this and understand more about this, I will never lack determination. Because this will motivate me. Even 
Amal feel weak from time to time. Why should I do? Should I do this or should I do that? So I can still have that determination going. I keep walking, you keep talking. Can you finish this? Number four. Opportunities because we have opportunities to develop a tested faith. Verse seven. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So when you go through trials, and you keep rejoicing, you keep that hope alive, you keep that consciousness of the inheritance which is in heaven. Amen. Uh -huh. What happened is that your faith you will become you like gold. You will not lose, you will win more. Amen. Your life will upgrade. And that's why we are not afraid of trials. He was just with the dolphins who put his head in court. That's why I wrote on Facebook the other day. He was just with Facebook the bit too much. We are here for the long haul. Peter in long haul. Long haul. Or long. Like a, like a, like a, the trip on plane. That's a long haul. Coming from Denmark to Mongolia is a long haul. So, or the long distance. Peter, or time is it to say it better? We are here for a long haul. So what may happen, may happen. We will not be there Our hope is alive. Amen. He resurrected from the dead. Amen. We have access to inheritance. We can let the rivers of joy flow freely in our lives. And even if we go through trials, God can use them to improve us. Whoa. My goodness. Then we can be determined. Strong will, weak will, I don't care. Whatever will you have, I will, be will, economy will, business will, I don't care. Because whatever will you have is not enough for kingdom assignments. You need that. If you think your strong will will do it, if you feel your bank account will do it, it will not. Never is not impressed. But if you build on this, he, he will fear you. He will fear you. He will fear you. Because just if you just mention number one, I have a living hope. They will say, uh-huh. And you say, you want to know why? I want to know why? It's because Jesus beat you. And our story. So you know, the devil has no access. So our faith will grow. English between it is snow. Okay, uh, just two more, then we take a break. Number five. Do you understand the picture here? In verse 13, he said, Be prepared for action. But then he knows from his own life. His victories and his defeats. That you need something to stand upon to be determined. Otherwise, you are just a person with a strong will. And the devil can break that will any time. No. Number six. 
We're standing on that foundation. You are unbreakable. Number five. So he's describing this platform. If you stand on it, whoa, then determination will be there for action, for decisions, for choices, for prioritizing your life, for discerning between different options. Okay. Prophetic forums. We should do it again. Verse 10. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person of time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating. <laughs> So Peter said, so Peter said, hey, there is one more thing to help you becoming more determined, more stable, more solid, more trustworthy. Even you are dispersed geographically, you feel alone, isolated, you are passing through midnight hours. Peter said, you know what? There have been prophetic forerunners doing that before you. Whoa, that's alright, then I'm fit for fight. <laughs> Are you with me? I'm not the only one, I'm not the first one. There have been many women through centuries walking with God with determination. Let me give you another example from the letter to the Hebrews. Chapter 11 speaks about Abel, about Abraham, about Joseph, about Gideon, all these great men and women making, uh, doing exploits. Uh -huh. That's the whole chapter 11. Then comes chapter 12. And then we read verse 1. Therefore, say therefore, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight. Every sin which clings to so closely, every sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is before us. So chapter 11, whoa, this long lineage. Of great people, determined people, turning around lives, turning around cities and nations. Samuel, when I think about Samuel, right? give me goosebumps. His word reached the borders of the nations. The nation. As long as he was alive, the Philistines could do nothing. Just a little thing. They had just a small schoolyard to play around. Samuel was in charge of the nation. People like that have been running before me. And Hebrew says, when we have so many witnesses, let us run with endurance. Don't deviate. Hebrews even says, even Jesus went like that. Because of the joy to come, he endured the pain. This is what Peter is writing about. You are dispersed, yes. 
Abraham was this person too. In Isaac and Jacob and Moses was ancient. On the other side of the mountain for 40 years. Samuel and David was running around in the wilderness like a wild rabbit. Because Saul was chasing him. I mean, his king wanted to kill him. Hey. But he did well. He did very well. That's why God says in New Testament, I want, I want David back. I want to rebuild the tabernacle of David. That's the house, that's the church. Are you catching this? Yeah. So we have prof prophetic runners. I mean, maybe your family you have. You have My parents were not foreigners. When I think about my mother moving to Africa, to the jungle, as an unmarried woman, back in her 30, in the 30s, under the war, Second World War. Yeah. Coming from a small village where people were born and died in the same village. Uh, her parents were mad at her. But she was so determined. She went along there. Amen. Are you are listening? They are forerunners. I am a forerunner for you. Your pastors are your forerunners. Amen. But then become a forerunner for somebody else. That's why your life must not decline in their years. Because if it does, we ask people to not follow you. If you decline, why should others follow you in your decline? Decline alone <laughs> until you wake up and come back to the house and come back to God. But don't harm others. So, prophetic runners. Maybe in Mongolia there have been people hundreds of years ago. Maybe they didn't speak in tongues. Maybe they didn't know about worship. Breakthrough worship or apostolic. But you know what? If they've heard God and followed God, they count. Prophetic for others. The last one. It's coffee break. <laughs> An imperishable seed. It's here, verse 20, 23. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed, through the living and abiding word of God. Two. So he said, there is a seed in your heart. Even I am in hurting. Ma is in UB. Amy is in Korea. Amy is in Korea. And we are in UB as well. <laughs> And we can be dispersed. During the week, one is working in that supermarket, the other one is going to school. You know what? There is a seed in your heart. That seed is the living, abiding word of God, what you have laid hold of. Not only what you have heard, but what you have laid hold of. Because seed can fall on you and fall off. But that seed is inside the heart, abiding in the heart. Do you understand now how Peter then in verse 13 could say, be prepared for action. 
Difficult opportunities, but in them I develop a tested faith in Him. I have prophetic forerunners. Whoa, and I have a seed in my heart. What can hinder me in acting? Taking my decision. Devil, you can come on. I will take you. <laughs> That's not arrogance. That's because you stand on a firm foundation. That's what Peter knew. Peter knew. He had a strong will, but he failed so many times. But now he knew. If I stand on this foundation here. Whoa, I'm prepared for action. God, I'm here. Bring it in. What is the agenda? I will walk with you. I will bend my rules. I will pardon with you. Yeah. You know, when I'm on my way to the airport and I'm thinking, whoa, man, it, it, 11 hours to Beijing and then one night there and then jet lag, I'm thinking, why am I going? If I was a carob, I could fly. But I'm not a carob. I mean, when, when, when I look at that, whoa, Mongolia, here I come. Because there is a hope. There is an inheritance I can draw on. There is a, even a physical rest to restore quickly. There is a joy. Being with you, eating with you, talking with you. Whoa, joy is coming. Amen. If it's difficult here, well, that's okay. Was it difficult in Mongolia? Yeah, we have two difficult days. Super. Through the difficult days of faith, he stays and becomes gold. Yeah. Yes. 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 Then Mongolia here come, Beijing here come. Oh, what about pollution? I don't care about the pollution. There is a seed in my heart, the binding living seed. If Chinese can survive the pollution, I can survive the pollution. Maybe they don't, I don't know. This is so important. Then Peter said, hey, stand on the platform. Then three things. Be prepared for action. Be sober minded. Don't let your emotions freak you out. Situations. Don't come out of balance. Don't come out of balance. I have written to some young people recently have a well balanced life. Because if our lives is unbalanced, that's the devil. And then he said, set your trust fully in the grace. Amen. Five days for five points, so we have to keep going. So tonight is determination. Okay.
And we need that platform. Peter knew from his life a strong will is not enough. Peter After a long time, he wrote, hey, be super-minded, set your trust fully on the grace, but in order to do that, you must build the platform. That changed something in my way of working. Because <laughs> They have no platform under their feet. Even if they do their best to walk, they will not walk for a long time. Yeah. So what do we do with people like that? We teach them to be quiet. We say, don't act. <laughs> Just stand on that. Build the platform. <laughs> Don't just show me your strong will. The oracle of the system is saying that the platform will carry you. Yeah, the platform is strong, you strong too. By the way, the enemy knows that platform. He broke his neck on that platform. Amen. Okay, so that's why Peter explained this before he said to them, "Be prepared for action." That's why to some people we don't say, "Be prepared for action." Your action is to build the platform. Regarding the prophetic forerunners, thought came to me in the break. Don't think it has something to do with age. Young people can become, can be forerunners. If they do well, they are foreigners. You don't have to call them foreigners, they are foreigners. Their life is an example. That's why Paul wrote to Timothy. B. Set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. This 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. 4, 12. I don't know how old he, he was. I don't have time to find out. Let's see, he was 35. Anybody in Hebrew 75 in the church? But Paul challenged him to become a forerunner. So have an eye on the young people in the church. And if you can see a good example, you just pick it up and follow. No, I follow Jesus. Okay, Find with me. <laughs> so, you know, when I talk with young people, sometimes what they say 
And we can expect that to happen. I think it should happen. Because God wants them to reach a higher and deeper than us. And they can become foreigners, they're just 18 or 22 or 25. Or they can become prophetic foreigners. Why? Why prophetic? I'm not saying they are prophets. Prophetic foreigners mean their life speaks. That's it. <laughs> so prophetic foreigner doesn't mean be a prophet. In of Foreigner means they are running in such a way that they are before somebody else. It does not make them better. Or more loved by God. Just makes them foreigners. Why him? Don't bother why him. Let him run. And if he's a prophetic foreigner, his race will speak. His life, his decisions. You watch him under the worship, we feel that. Whoa, I want to be like him. But he's only 26. I'm 56. So if he does well, you follow him. Pick up the example. Timothy, be an example in conduct, in life, in attitude, in everything. If they don't follow you, it's because they are proud. They need to humble themselves and then they might be able to go. So I just want to make this point. Prophetic wellness is not age. We have some elderly people in our church. They are prophetic wellness. I said to the young people, look at them. Watch them. Hear their prayers. Catch the spirit in their prayers. I also said to the old people, watch the young people. Amen? Alright, so let me give you some advices. Practical advices. Some people say they feel you are too theoretical. You have to be more practical. So I am improving myself. Well, we can improve. God makes progress. My advice number one. Choose to be determined. That must surprise you. How can I choose that? Either you are determined or you're not determined. No. Okay. Not like that. If you have built your platform, if you are building your platform, you are more and more conscious of you have a living hope. For your life, for your nation, for your children, children in law. No, for them, be If we do that, if you develop a consciousness that there is an inheritance always accessible for me. 
миний хувьд хизээ хүссэн цагта нэвтрэх эрх нь өгөгдсөн өв надад байгаа гэдгийг та ухамсарлах тусам. Build joy in my life, rejoicing whatever happens. Юу ч болж ирсэн баяр хөөрийг өөрөх амьдралд барьж байгуулж байгаа. Not because of all circumstances but under all circumstances. Бүх нөхцөл байдлаас болж баяр л хэлээгүй штэ. Бүх нөхцөл байдал дунд баяр л гэж хэлээ. If I'm aware that I have prophetic forwardness. Миний өмнө гүйгчнэр байгаа гэдгийг би мэдхий бол. Who run before me. Тэд миний өмнө гүйсэн. Still run before me. Миний өмнө одоо ч гэсэн гүйж байна. Amen. And if I'm conscious that there is a seed inside of me, the word of God living and abiding in my heart. I lay hold of it through the years. Бурхны амьд үг миний зүр сэтгэл дотор тархицсан бөгөөд би тэр үгнээс зуурсан гэдгээ та баттай мэдэх тусам. Then determination is a choice. Ингэж мэдэх тусам шийдэмгий байдал нь бидний сонголт болж ирдэг. If you don't have that then. Ийм сөр байх болсон. So be too weak to vulnerable. Та дэндүү сонголт ороо дэндүү эмзэг хэвэр болох. And the devil is a nasty devil. Яарын дьявол. So Peter said, I can remind you of this thing. Дьявол бол үнэхээр яарын нэг юм аа. Тийм учраас Петр хэлсэн. Би таамаг үүнийг сануулж байна. If I do that way, then I still do that. Би энэ сайн хийж чадсан юм бол би одоо ч гэсэн хийж байгаа. Then determination is a choice. За. I can choose. Эдгээр суурийг би сайн барьж, одоо барьж байх үед шийдэмгий байдал нь миний хувьд сонголт бол It's like if you have a bank account that with money on it, you can choose to go to the bank. Тэгэхээр танд одоо таны дансанд ч мөнгө байлаа гэж шүү дээ. Тэгээд гэж бодъё л да. Тэгвэл та хүссэн үедээ тийм очоод мөнгө ахгүй гүй юм гэдгээ шийдэж шүү дээ. You want to go you go. If you don't want to go you don't want to go. Та мөнгө ахгүй гэвэл ахгүй аавыг гэж шийдвэл аав. You die of some starving because you don't want to go. Би та банк руу явж мөнгө ахгүй хүсэхгүй байгаа учраас нисэж болж болно. Food is not flying into your mouth. Тэгээд хоол таны амруу өөрөө нисэж орж ирэхгүй. So, but it's because you have a bank account. Тэгээд танд банкнд данс байна. Then the rest is up to you. Тэгээд данс нь чи мөнгө байх. Тэгээд энэ мөнгөөр яах юм бэ гэдэг чи таньж. God has provided this platform. Тэгээд бурхан энэ суурийг ингэж өгсөн юм шиг байна. Everything to get it. Бид үүнийг ахвын тулд юу ч төлөөх. Zero. Тэг юу ч төлөөх. We just say yes, we receive it. That's all. Тэгээд тийм ээ гэж хэлээд хүлээж авсан. He paid the price. Jesus үнийг төлсөн. Our part of the deal. Харин миний хийх стэйжд юу вэ? Би шийдвэр гаргах гэсэн. I will draw on that. Би энэс уунаа. I will what of the sea. Би энэ үрийг услах. I will not let the devil steal the word God has given me. Бурхны надад өгсөн үгийг дьявол хулгайлах би зөвшөөрөхгүй. That's my response. Энэ миний хариуцлага юм шиг байна. So when the platform is okay, then determination is a choice. Суур баригдсан байхад, суур сайн баригдсан байхад шийдэмгий байх эсэх нь таны сонголт болж байгаа. So choose right. Тэр зүгээр л сонгох. That's what God said to Israel. Тийм учраас бурхан Израиль ч үгүй гэсэн. Бүгд өөр юм chapter 3 or 5 or whatever. Би танар бүгдийг хангаж өгсөн. Open the sea. Тэгсийг яах вэ? Египетээс таныг гадлаа. Egyptians gave them gave you their gold and their clothes. Яаж танар төр хулцаа алтаа тайлж өгсөн. Би энийг танар хийж. But choose today. Хар өнөөдөр танар өгөх юм уу амийн аль нэг сонгох гэж хэлсэн. Joshua 24. Яшуа 24. Choose today. Will you serve him or will you not serve him? Will you serve the false gods? 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 Number two advice from Pastor PhD. That's the only PhD I have. PhD, PhD. We need to learn that PhD. We never have another PhD. Just my initials. All right. The second advice from me is this. Draw consciously and consistently on these sources in order to grow in to grow determination. Шийдэмгий байдал дотор шийдэмгий байдлыг өсгөхийн тулд эдгээр их сурвалжуудаас ухамсартай нар санаачлахтайгаа байг өө 
That's what Peter is doing. Peter is saying, "I remind you." Peter is saying, "I remind you." This is my second letter. To remind you. So we have to do that. Remind ourselves. I have a living hope. Church in Mongolia has a living hope. God can change the situation. God can change the situation. So there is a hope. There is also an inheritance. There are resources of strength and joy. Are you with me? All that is provided by God. So we have to draw on that consciously and consistently. It does not come your way. That's why Peter said, be prepared for action. That's action. Choose determination. Draw on these rivers, see these sources. Think about the prophetic forerunners. I got a book for my one of my sons for Christmas. That big. When I opened the Christmas present, I thought, Ah, pastor, I feel already tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not open it yet. <laughs> it's about it's about the German man. German His name is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and. Uh, now I am almost at the end of the book. Because when I began to read it, just caught me. I could not stop. That man's life. Was born in the beginning of last century. Yeah, Nineteen hundred something. Yeah, whatever. From a very wealthy family, very intellectual family. His father was a famous psychiatrist. One of his brothers worked with Albert Einstein. Another brother uh, was famous lawyer, he was the main lawyer of Lufthansa in Germany. All of them. When he was 15 years old, he said to his parents, I want to be a believer and I want to be a theologist. I want to study theology because I want to know God. His father was devastated. No God. But his mother said to him, you just go ahead. His brothers mocked him. Look at the church. When he was 15, he said to them, if the church has to change, I will change it. When I read that, I was saying, I will read this book. This is a book for me. I will not tell you the whole story because the book is like that. <laughs> An amazing man. But then he grew up studying theology. He became a famous pastor in Germany. And the first thing which was on his heart was to train the young generation. Amazing. Not Pentecostal, not baptized in the Holy Spirit, just a Lutheran. He was next generation after training them to get something into them. Yeah. Which he did. Especially young men. Took them some places. He spoke to them from morning to evening. For days. They love him. They follow him. I mean, this man lived before his time. 
in book mana ungestan tutigu book dilhet ungler gintig bolon he was prophetic already he was very things tere pura ahitzi ishu zuulhi tesen baga bolon and he began to organize resistance against hitler tere gintleri istergutsen hutlgoni dig zakhon baga bolon denmark he came to sweden he went to switzerland he went to america he went to spain because of the wealth and the the nobility of his family he had access to ambassadors and politicians Тэгэхээр Тэг бид нар түүнтэй ярих болно. Хич ийм амжилттай юм болно гэж төсөөлөхгүй байна. Nobody can talk with that of Hitler. Тэг хич Гитлертэй ярьж чадахгүй. The man was a demon. Тэр хүмүүс ярын юм баггүй. Ярын нэгтэй бид нар. This one pastor. Харин тэр нэг pastor. Continue to stand up. Эсрүүцэн хэвээрээс. And he worked everywhere to mobilize the churches but nobody want to listen to him. Тэр хаа сайгүй яваад сүмүүдийг ингэж бүр татан оролцуулах гэж хичээжээ. to kill him. Тэгэл бүр Гитлерийг алах төлөвлөгөө боловсруулсан. It failed. Тэгээ дандаа энэ төлөвлөгөө. The last minute. Дандаа сүүлийн хүчин Гитлер did not show up. Гитлер ирдгүүч юм уу? Oh, they said when he enters Czechoslovakia, we will take him and then he changed his mind, did not enter Czechoslovakia. This man was demonized. За тэрүүгээр Гитлер орж ирлээ гэн гүтэл тэрүүгээр орж ирэх шүү санаагаад өөрчлөлт. Тэр Гитлер бол ерөөсөө ярын нэгнээр өдөр дизэндүүлсэн байсан байна. Тэр he grew and he stood there. Oh my goodness. Тэр пастор. Я. Тэгээ тэр тэр пастор ахлаар яг түүнийг эсэргүүц зогсчихсан. He got began to smell something. Тэгээд Гитлер нэг зүйл өнгөрчих. He checked up on him. Тэгээд түүний араас явсан байна. He was killed. He was in prison. He was killed. Four or five weeks before Hitler collapsed. Just four weeks before. Such a sad story. But his life speaks loud. That produces something in Zelon. Such a sense of determination. Үйл явдал миний дотор юм шийдэмгий байдлыг өнхөр хөдөлж слэт ин жой нободи уу яг тий герман бүх сүмүүд унтаа байдлаас хич тийм зүйл болохыг урдчилж харахгүй байсан even churchill who was a good man did not want to listen to him churchill гэж no support түүний churchill гэж хэлж сонсохгүй байсан тэгээ нөхцөл байдал муудаа лээсэн улам харин сэрцгий болж ирсэн улам ярын болж ирсэн I mean, what is written there is like, has it happened here on this planet? But the more blood he tasted, the more blood he wanted. And that one man, he was like Daniel, just kept standing. But then, Hitler saw him. And got him. But then Hitler was finished, shortly after that. Түүнээс дараахан удалгүй 
хүчирхэг сүмүүд басаж in the Choose to be determined. We have to draw on these sources. Number three. Stay intentionally close to determined people. I'm thinking about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. It was so difficult for him to find somebody. Mm-hmm. Without conviction is hard. God can look after our nation. We have to stand up. Uh-huh. So we have to find people. You don't, you don't need to have so. I, have to find, I have to find determined people. Not just nice people. There are nice people. I have nice people too. Good friends, nice friends, serious friends. But niceness is not the same as determination. Because some nice people they will back off when the midnight woman kicks in. That's action. We have to find these people. I will continuously stay in contact with them. It's not church memberships. You have to not the team sheeting me who was with them. Be When they speak to me, my spirit rises. It doesn't have to be pastors. Pastors I have pastors like that. But I know very determined young people. When they talk to me, whoa, determination comes back. Amen. That's intentional. You understand the word intentional? That's a choice. I heard people say, I have Jesus, that should be enough. Then go with Jesus. I hope, I hope he will go with you too. Because the work takes two. So stay intentionally close to determined people. Okay. Let me show you something here I found the other day. Look at the end of First Peter. Peter three to six to five. What time is it? First Peter, chapter five. Peter Verse twelve. By Silvanus, the faithful brother, as I regard him, I have written briefly to you, exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. In what Bokhne Jinkin Nigus is with the bit hammer skirtage, Sorhanshan, with me, Kimjit Ahto Bach, Peter Jinst, Sidoana Benjamin Tafchum Bitch there, in Nigus is Dr. Batsas. Okay, so he said, I am from. Silvanus is my friend. It's a faithful friend. Now, if faith has lost its strength, at least in danger, faithful means you, you are there all the time. Faithful I used to say, dead people in the cemetery, they are faithful too. They are, they are there all the time. <laughs> it's not that. Somebody 
who is so determined so they continue to walk well. Шийдэмгий учраас үргэлж нүүл нь тасралгүй алхсаар байгаа тэр хүмүүс бол итгэмжтэй юм. So he is giving his writing to all these he said I have a friend like that. Петр энэ бүхнийг бичин гүтээ дараа надад яг ийм найз байна. As he did as the term in as an Тэр яг над шиг шийдэмгий гэсэн байна. Also have a song Marcus is my song. Тэр миний хүн Маркус гэж хэлсэн. Marcus 13. 13-р. So does Mark my song. Тэгээс миний хүн Марк гэж. Okay. Next one. За дараагийнх нь walk and talk with people more determined than you. Танаас илүү шийдэмгий хүмүүстэй хамт алхаж ярилцаа. Don't think you are the greatest. Өөрийгөө бити хамгийн аавын гэж бодоорой. The most handsome. Хамгийн царайл гэж юм уу? We need people greater than us. Бидээс танаас илүү хүчтэй. Танаас илүү нэгнийг challenges us to grow. Тэр хүмүүс биднийг өсөлт рүү ингэж татаж байдаг. To progress. Биднийг хөгжил рүү татаж байдаг. So next sure you have people like that. Тэр тань таны иргэн тойр танаас илүү хүн байхсан. And if you are well, and if you are well connected to the house, you have people like that. Та өргөөтөө сайн холбогдох юм бол ийм хүмүүстэй холбогдсон байна гэсэн. That's why I want fathers and brothers. Of course, who is? Тэр учраас би хэлсэн мэдээж тэд нар бол эцгүүд болоо дахин дүүс юм а өөр хин байр гэж вэ яах гэж хэлсэн юм. Maybe not everybody in the house. Өргөө төрөл бүх хүн биш байж болно. They will be determined. Maybe not everybody is determined. Тэр хүн болгон шийдэмгий биш байж болно гэсэн. It's okay. Зүгээр. The fine song who are more determined than you. Тэр цараас илүү шийдэмгий тэр нэгнийг олох because it will keep you growing and pursuing and going forward. Тэр таныг урагшлах, мөрчлөх тэр бүхэнд чинь төлөхөж өгдөг, татаж өгдөг. Okay? Is that important? I think it's important. Миний хувьд чухал гэж үзэж байна. Walking talk with people more determined than you. Таныс илүү шийдэмгий хүмүүстэй алхаж ярилцсан. Hopefully your fathers, brothers in the house. Learn from them. Talk with them. How do you handle the situation? I just went through midnight. I'm still all dark in my face. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> the of God. Then how do you handle your midnight? Та яаж өөрөөр шүн бодыг даач. Learn from each other. Би би нисэ сайш. I know our lives are different. No people are the same. Хоорондоо адилх нь нэг ч амьдрал байхгүй. But there are some basic patterns. Гэхдээ амьдралын суурь зарчмууд гэж байна. Загвуруулах гэж байна. Don't think you need your own personal revelation to an angel to help you. Тэгэхээр тэнгэр илч танд ирээ зөвхөн танд зориулсан илчлэлтийг өгөөд тэгэж даван туулна гэж битийн хүлээ. We can learn from one another. Бид би би нэсээ суралцах хэрэгтэй. Amen. Okay, I think I've finished. За дуусла. The next key just we we mention it for you. Дараагийн төлөвөрийг дуурдаад өгөх is definition. За энэ бол тодорхойлолт. Яг үгүй бол хэлсэн юм. Definition. Now, in the same way, mm-hmm. we cannot expect people to be determined if they don't have a platform under their feet. Хүмүүс хүл хүл одоо зэ ингэж хэлээ. Суур баригдаагүй хүмүүсээс бид нар шийдэмгий байхыг шаардаж болохгүй та адил. We cannot expect people to have a well-defined life if they are not determined first. Хүмүүс эхлээд шийдэмгүй болоогүй ажиж амьдралдаа юмсыг тодорхойлох боломжгүй. It's like saying God show me your will then I will think about if I want it or not. But show it first. Тэгээ энэ ингэж байгаа та ажилхан бохоо. Бурхан минь эхлээд надаа өөрийнхөө хүсэлтийг харуулж дараа нь би шийд дагах дагахгүй гэж шийдэг гэж байгаа та ажилхан. God is not your servant. Бурхан таны бол зарц биш. Heaven is not a restaurant. God is not your waiter. Мөнхийн ус Ресторан биш бурхан таны зөвгч биш. Show me you two soups and I will decide on the tomato. Би аль нэг нэг сонгоё гэж хэлж болохгүй. You must be the, you must be the platform. Та эхлээд суурийг барьсан байх хэрэгтэй. Then you must show some determination. God has to see that. Тэгээд та бурхан шийдэмгий байдлаар бүр харуулсан байх хэрэгтэй. Тэгээд дараа he will bring some definition. 
Because that definition lands in a determined heart. You understand that? Yes. It's like talking with your girlfriend about having children. Find out first if you marry or not. Whatever I want to know is about what you think about your you know what? Shut up and find out if you love me. I will yeah. find out if I love you. Hello. <laughs> Maybe grow up first because that question is stupid. <laughs> Forget the children. They don't want you. <laughs> you don't. I will find somebody else with other questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same in the kingdom. He wants to see it. that platform. He wants to see that we value it, we build on it, we love that hope, and we love to rejoice, and we love the inheritance, and we honor the prophetic forerunners. When determination rises inside of us, when God sees that, okay, I will help you. Define, draw some lines, draw some borders. But why draw borders if the person does not know if they go south or north or west or east? Or oh, thank you for the borders. Then we cross the border now. No point in defining that, but when the person is determined. Then God will say, God, okay. sit here with me. Let me draw this for you. This is about your health, this is about your sexual life, this is about your education. This is about the connection with the church. This is about your finances. You have to become responsible for your finances. Your parents have helped you all the way now. You take responsibility for your finances. First, we have to be determined. We have to be prepared for action. We have to be super minded. That's why some people have no definition in their lives. God's word for them is build the platform. Then find out what you want. I will invest in you, I will help you. Okay, so tomorrow we we'll talk definition. Okay, but don't ask God, God define my life. Find out first. Are you, are you aware of the living hope? Are you drawing on your inheritance? Are you rejoicing? Amen. Amen. Are you honoring the prophetic forerunners? Are you watering the seed inside of you? Because if you are not, your life is borderless. Anything can happen anytime. And it's so discouraging. To invest in people and everything collapses anytime for any reason. It's like drawing some borders for your children, but they cross them all the time. Non-stop crossing borders. And you think, what should I do? Sometimes church is like that, dysfunctional family. Amen. Amen. Are you happy? Yes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Rejoice about your platform. It's a gift from God. He paid the price. We just receive it. In Christ. Then let determination grow. And then it happens, God will help you with definition. Tomorrow I will show you how important definition is. Two years ago I had no clue about that. Now it has become so important. I try to help people with that. Otherwise, anything can happen anytime. People can go to the church for 15 years and they leave the church. Do you think? What happened? Did they die? No, no, it's not. I saw him in the supermarket. Oh, he's not a good one. He's not a good one. This is not church. At least it's not church changing a nation. So have a good evening. Enjoy your dinner. Have sweet dreams about determination. Be determined to come back tomorrow. Thank you, Mark.